Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel where we talk all about the GATE exam and we are studying DBMS. We have started understanding the SQL. In this video, we are going to understand that how a SQL query gets processed within the DBMS. So whatever type of query we are writing, whether it is a DDF statement or DML statement it's coming from, through some application program interface or it is shooted by the DBA or any user is giving any query, then how does it get into the system? And to final execution that we get to see the result, what are the things that happen with an SQL query? We are going to see that, which generally is termed as query processing. So in this video, we are going to understand the SQL query processing. So I have this bigger diagram on the board and an example right here. So we'll go simultaneously, whatever we will understand here in the block diagram, we'll see with the example, how does it process. So let's start understanding it. Uh, first of all, we have the SQL query, which will be given as an input to this block diagram. So we have uh, two, three components of this diagram. We have parser and translator, under which the SQL query is going as input. Then we have a query optimizer, who is going to optimize the query, why and how, on what parameters, we will understand just now. Then we have the query evaluation engine, which finally executes your query. So the query starts coming, it enters from here and it comes down to this point where it gets evaluated and finally you get to see the result or the query output. And along with this, we have our disk storage attached, the secondary memory, the disk storage, hard disk, where you have the, all the data. So now you see here we have the data files where you actually store the data relations okay then you have indices that is index files whatever index and whatever table whatever relation have been created all those index files are presented this year then we have the data dictionary data dictionary in very simple word i would say it is data about data which we also call as metadata also it is known as system catalog the catalog now if i say i have two tables like one for student one for faculty then the information about these tables that uh, the table student or the relation student has how many attributes, what are the types of attributes, what is its file structure, what is its file name, what are the indexes created upon it, all these information which is not directly related to user but it is important and it is recorded for the benefit of query execution and DBMS operation. So that information is stored in the data dictionary. So we'll have information about each and every relation. Likewise, we'll have information about each and every index file. So whatever data file you have, information about that. Whatever index file you have, information about that. Other than that, we also have statistical data. Statistical data is uh, like two use as statistics which makes the uh, you know estimation of some cost which which is utilized to find out that how much block access we need to make so in that we can count uh, a relation has how many cardinality what is the number of tuples for this particular relation and then depth of the b tree what is the depth of the b tree what is the order of it all these kind of data which is uh, you know in terms of statistics which is required to make some analysis before going for some particular algorithm or some particular execution all those data is present here now you understand very simply that this this is storage and these files are in total connection with this block whichever part of this diagram will require the data will fetch and access from it okay sql is easy to understand for you and me for us Okay, for the users because it's English like, but how does the from the table name explains that I want the data from this table that needs another intermediate transformation. So what happens the query comes, be it a DML type of query, I mean the data manipulation language command or the DDL, the data definition language command. We have separate compiler for both the types of commands. Okay, internally, I mean, of course, yes. So this parser and translator component has two types of com uh, compiler. Whatever type of query is coming to be executed, respective compiler gets activated and it does few of the things what an S a compiler is generally supposed to do. Like it will scan the query. It will scan the query in terms of tokenization. So it will make the query tokens out of the coming query. Like what are the keywords? Like select from where what all these are these are the keywords 
So you can see an example right here. Whatever is given in red color, select from where. What all these are? These are the query tokens and these are keywords basically. This is the attribute name, this is the channel name and this is the predicate, the condition over which we are checking for the tuples. So likewise, a query coming like this will be scanned by the scanner and it will be grouped into tokens. After the query has been scanned by the scanner, the parser actually does the parsing. What does, it, what does a normal parser do? It will check for the syntax rules according to the grammar. So simply whatever query is coming and now we have tokenized it already internally and now it will check for uh, based on the SQL grammar, the whatever language grammar rules are there according to the rules, it will check whether the syntax is correct or not, any syntactical mistake or error is present or not. So scanning, then parsing, after the parsing is done, then comes the role of validation. So a validation simply means whatever relation name and attribute names the query is coming with, are they valid or not? It actually simply goes to the data dictionary and checks such name relation exist or not, such attribute names exist or not. So this becomes the initial part when the query comes into it, the compiler makes a scanning, parsing and validation. After that comes the translation part, of course that is also part of the compiler itself because the intermediate code generation, correct? So the translator is going to do nothing but an intermediate code is generated an internal representation of your query will be produced which is in a tree data structure and it is known as a query tree. So right here if I want to say I can say here I have my query tree. Okay and now this is important here that what the internal representation is going to be like. Just like if you have a C program language program then the internal representation we usually see as the three address code statements here the internal representation is going to be relational algebra expression relational algebra as all of you know is one of the query language which allows a user to write its query in terms of operations so internally every sql query which comes to the system gets translated into relational algebra expression okay so uh, if i just come up here that how does it happen if you want to know for an example then we have this query right here I can convert this into a relational algebra expression like this I have written it already on the board we can simply take that relation channel then we can project the only one field which is views because ultimately what we are going to select is views after projecting all the views the, the attribute views all the rows of the attribute view we can provide this condition selection views greater than thousand so whichever value of view is greater than thousand that particular value will be fetched out as your output so this becomes one of the relational algebra expression now uh, here it is very important to understand is that every SQL query can be formulated in multiple ways. I mean, if somebody gives you a, a statement, write a query for this, you can write multiple queries for doing the same task, which will produce the same output, correct? Again, the same, I mean, any one given query, SQL query, can be translated into multiple relational algebra expression, and each expression will result finally in the same output. The only change is, some expression is going to take more time, some expression is going to take less time, some of, uh, of expressions are going to take equal time. Okay, so likewise, this one query can also be written into two expressions. The second expression says, why do you first of all fetch all the views? Just fetch the views which match with your condition, correct? So don't take all the tuples. Only take the tuples which are matching with views greater than 1000. So the condition will be applied first after that, after applying this condition, whatever views will be selected, okay, whatever uh, tuples of that particular attribute will be selected, that we fetch as a final output. So that is one of the other way to write the same query. Now this relation algebra expression is not forwarded just like that. It is forwarded in the query tree form. So that simply means that whatever operations you are going to perform on the relation that you that you write in the tree form as I told just now in the tree data structure right here you can see that we have the channel that relation name over which we are going to perform the operation the relational algebra operation selection with the condition views greater than thousand over that we are going to project the views 
attribute okay so this is a showing this is showing the query tree and this is showing that how what is the order of execution just like the evaluation in the semantic trees the annotated pass tree right so this will lead to this and this will lead to this so this represent the query tree and this finally is going to get given to this query optimizer so as i told each sql query can be written into multiple relational algebra expressions now one very important point that each operation operator of relational algebra each operator of relational algebra can be executed with the help of multiple algorithms which simply means that this has two operators to be executed and we can have multiple ways to execute them so now comes a challenge for this query optimizer to decide that these operators are to be executed with the help of which algorithm okay and which not a plan generator is going to generate a plan so here comes the one more term query plan okay so you can say the query tree coming to us will be treated as a query plan okay and it's not going to be treated as a single query plan what will happen the query optimizer will look for each and every algorithm possible for the execution of these operators and it will generate separate separate query plans for the same query tree okay each query plan will have different algorithm each query plan will have a different algorithm whatever algorithms are possible to execute these operators it will be attached with it and it will become a query plan okay which is also usually known as execution plan so so execution plan evaluation plan query execution plan query evaluation plan are the same thing similarly even the query evaluation engine is also sometimes named as query execution engine so don't get confused execution evaluation means same thing here so this query optimizer is going to generate multiple plans that means it is going to generate multiple such query trees where each and every query tree will be having different algorithm attached to the operator which is involved here okay suppose uh, here for this views i can make use of simple file scan the simple linear search i will go with each and every tuple and i will check which view is greater than 1000 okay the other method could be if i have a index file if i have index file created upon the attribute views i can simply make use of that i can go with the index file so this procedure this operator could be done with the help of simple file scan that is linear search which is going to take more time or it could be done with the help of index file if it is present or else if my file or my data file is ordered or sorted based upon views i can also make use of binary search understand so like even if i have to talk about only selection operator the selection operator sigma then it can be done with the help of linear search binary search index file which could be primary index file with equality condition it could be cluster file with non equality condition it could be a secondary file based on the type of attribute we are looking for correct and what are the conditions right so as i told we have multiple plans so we of course cannot use all the plans for the execution of the query out of the all the execution plans we will select one plan which is the cost effective which is going to give the best output in terms of number of operations required for each plan it is going to decide its cost now comes a point what is cost cost is nothing but then the number of disk access you need to make number of memory executions you need to make what is the buffer size what is the uh, pool memory all these factors how many times you have to transfer data from disk to main memory this is a very cost effect i mean this is the operation which takes all the cost the time taken correct how it is efficient and effective as less time it takes and produce the output as quickly to the user so that is going to give you the cost of the plan and which for which again this is going to talk about the statistical data and the data dictionary because who has the information about how many tuples are there what is the length of the b tree what is the size of the file what are the number of pages in the file what all information is present where it is present right here so this component which is called query optimizer its basic role is to generate multiple plans with different different algorithms attached to that plan and finally find out their cost and pick the 
best one and that plan becomes the input for the next block that is query evaluation engine and it is finally known as a evaluation plan or the execution plan so basically this is now a blueprint a blueprint like it says that how you have to execute the operators one by one and finally you get to get your output okay and this blueprint blueprint looks something like this you have a query tree on that you will simply attach what you are going to make use of suppose we have a views index file uh, index file on views so i would just simply write index maybe file number one so i would write index file number one that means this algorithm the this operator is going to get executed with the algorithm that is attached to it and the name is index file one so this this completely query tree has finally become the query evaluation plan. Now this has become the query evaluation plan and this will get forwarded to my next block which is going to evaluate. It's an engine, it is, it is a processor which is going to run it and you are going to see the result or the query output. So you see my dear students that how a query which comes, it takes exactly the same processing just like a, any regular language program correct but important to understand was that yes an SQL query coming gets compiled always in terms of scanning passing translation validation intermediate form generation right and then it gets optimized just like a code optimizer we get to select the best query plan with annotations attached to it okay these annotations just like a semantic tree we have annotated what is going to get used in terms of algorithm and then finally it gets executed on your processor and you get to see your output correct this is this is about the query processing a lot of things are there which i'm trying to hide just to give you a, a you know over holistic approach the overall approach not getting into very depth we have query blocks we have different different algorithms and uh, definitions which i'm trying to hide from you uh, in order to make it simple and understandable I hope this was understandable and you really found something beneficial out of it because guys if you are appearing for a recruitment and you say I know SQL this is something which you are supposed to know probably and also for the gate interviews gate interviews means after the gate exam, exam is done you appear for interview into any institute like IIT or IIC Bangalore they might ask such kind of questions it's always good to know that how ultimately it is getting executed within the system